Sylvia Coates has been a registered occupational therapist for over 15 years. She joins us from her clinic today in Pickering. Hey Sylvia, thanks for joining me. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you doing? I'm doing good too. I wanted to ask you um, the basics first. What is an occupational therapist? I can answer that. An occupational therapist is a type of healthcare professional. We use a functional approach to help solve problems that are interfering with people's ability to do things that are important to them. So we'll just give a little bit more background on that. Yeah. Um, the training for an OT um, is based in medical and physical disability and injury, but also the psychosocial factors of injury. And so OTs use a holistic lens to look at all aspects of the person in their environment and their daily routines prior to making recommendations and providing treatment. So when, when you're working with a client, how does someone know when they need an OT or when it's time to make a change that an OT can help with? So one would know, a person would know when it's time to make a change, when something becomes dysfunctional in their life or their quality of life is decreasing or the health and wellness is decreasing. So that could look like um, a person may be developing shoulder pain from many transfers or propelling their wheelchair long distances. It could be that they want to do a task in their kitchen and they don't know how to modify the kitchen, don't know what the available resources are to modify it to be able to complete a task um, while living with their disability and so on. Thank you for explaining that. Um, I want to ask you, you suggested calling this episode Doing Life Easier with Equipment. What does that mean to you and how does it relate to your occupation? Yes, yeah, so doing life easier with equipment means to me that when people are having difficulty in their life routines, um, as an OT, I believe that a properly fitted assistive device or properly prescribed medical equipment can be used to safely and independently, uh, can be used for the client to safely and independently participate in activities they maybe otherwise couldn't do. Um, so what I think it does is using equipment can help them build their life right away after injury while working on recovery, rather than waiting for recovery to occur before starting to live their life. A lot of equipment, uh, while it can be helpful, requires fitting and specific types of equipment. So what do you think about universal design and what's the connection between equipment, helping yourself and universal design? So I love universal design and the process of universal design um, because it really enables and empowers the human population to improve their performance, health and wellness and social participation despite what their living circumstances are. And so I liken doing life easier with equipment as the same as that, where medical devices and equipment help people improve their performance, improve their health and wellness and increase their social participation. So um, I've been injured for over 20 years and it took the pandemic for me to realize that I could use equipment to gain exercise at home uh, and I currently use a hand cycle for cardio. Um, why is it important to use equipment at home and what do you say to people to get over that mental hurdle of asking for help and using equipment at home? Yes, it's, a, it's especially in the community, a huge hurdle um, and so I've try to approach it by saying that you can do the things you love to do with the people that you want to do them with in the time frame that you want to do them when you use equipment. So a piece of equipment can help meet you where you're at, whether it's the size of equipment, the height of where equipment needs to be, whether it's about sensory input that you need to process, all things that can be physical barriers to you participating. So I really work with the uh, getting people to do the things they love to do with the people they want to do them with at the right time as my main approach to, to addressing this. That's a respectable approach. Um, so I'm excited to ask you this question. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what are your top three adaptive equipment recommendations that people might not know about? Sure, I have, I have three right here handy for you. Um, there are the basics, um, working on some basic principles. One is to reduce or increase friction when working with um, items on a table or on a tray. So this piece of double-sided non-slip material is a rubber mat. Um, in the medical equipment world, it's called Dyson, D-Y-C-E-M. And it comes non-perforated non -perforated, and this one's perforated. 
So basically what this does is allows you to improve your grip, improve stability, and it gives you visual cues and helps you do the tasks you need to do. Um, it is flexible material, easy to cut. It can be wrapped around objects and to make objects thicker and can be placed under objects so that objects don't slide around. So I, every one of my clients ends up with some rubber mat or Dyson in their home after they've been working with me. That's a great tip. That looks like it's very useful. Thank you. What was your, second, another one. What was your second piece of equipment? Yeah, so the second piece of equipment is again a little red item. Sim super simple, but the principle is to increase the diameter of the handle that you're holding when you go to grasp the handle. So this is a red foam buildup with a hole in the middle. You can see the hole. You may place a spoon, a fork, a knife, a pen, a pencil, whatever item you need, even a toothbrush inside this. And when you hold it, it don't require as much strength in your hand to hold that object. And that makes it easier for you to then use that object. That one's pretty ingenious and it looks like it's uh, pretty cheap. Super cheap and you can always um, wrap some of the rubber mat around an object with some duct tape and that becomes a temporary foam buildup if you don't have access to the actual item. That's great. Thank you. Our third, one of the third and final um, simple adaptive device that I prescribe to most of my clients. And I'm going to back up for this one here. You're looking at a buckwheat bolster here, just simple and small. That can be used for positioning a person's body, whether they're in their bed or in their wheelchair. And what it does is it helps to hold the limb in place. Say if you have spasticity and your body is moving and you don't have control over that, the buckwheat can be helped to control your arm so that you can use it as a stability hand when you're using the other hand to function, um, or it can be used to help position you in bed so you can be uh, in one position and um, comfortable. So I use the buckwheat roll quite often with many clients. I really appreciate you sharing your top three uh, favorite pieces of adaptive equipment. Uh, I think it's important to seek out the help that you need and there's no shame in finding something that works for you and uh, even uh, yeah, I think it's, it's great. Thank you for sharing these top three tips. Uh, is there any final piece of advice you'd give to someone seeking an OT? Yes, for sure. I think it's um, a case of, uh, in my clinical practice, just sharing what I've seen get in people's way of making changes to using equipment in their overall lifestyle. It can be as simple as a lack of knowledge of what is available and what's worked for other people. Sometimes it can be a core belief or fear that you may be becoming dependent and losing your independence. But I'm of the mindset that these devices are used to increase our independence. And there are some times when we grow out of using the devices, we don't need them anymore. And there are other times when we use them and they integrate into our lifestyle and we get to develop the routines that we want to and live the life that we want to live as close to how we want to live it. That's great. Thanks, Sylvia. How can viewers learn more about complex injury rehab? Yes, yeah, so they can go to our website, complex injury rehab. Um, you can go on to Google and Google complex injury rehab, or you could email me at scoats at complexinjury.com. Um, we, have, we have OTs across Southwestern Ontario. So we have a North team in Barrie. We have a, a team in the West, Mississauga, over to Burlington area. And then we have a team in the East at Services Durham and a Central Toronto team. So occupational therapists in the community ready and willing to come and, and uh, help and guide you Thank you so much. That you think. That's great. Thank you so much, Sylvia. Thank you for joining me.